Hello everyone, welcome back to another futures trading video. Today we're continuing our Earn to Trade Gauntlet series, where we're using the Polarity ATI to pass the Earn to Trade funding challenge. Where at the end of the series, we'll get access to $200,000 of their real trading capital with no personal risk, which we will use to supplement our current trading account to take higher positions with that advantageously skewed risk reward. So basically, we need to get $11,000 in profit to win the challenge. We're currently already at around 4.5K from our last video, so we're almost halfway there. So hopping right into the trading day, we notice that price has been exceptionally choppy as well as entropy being very, very high, meaning we are in regression mode and we are double arming, which means the strategy is on and is now looking for a trade. Also, today we are using a quote unquote hyper scalping strategy where we are looking for one point of profit and our stop loss is 1.5 points. Or in terms of ticks, four ticks versus six ticks for a total RR of 0.66. This strategy is more suited towards traders who want a less hands-on approach to trading order flow and are looking for a very quick high probability trade. Keep in mind that although this strategy has a higher win rate than a more conservative risk strategy, you're risking more than you're gaining per trade. For this strategy, you need to win 66% of the time to break even. Fortunately, we have historically achieved a win rate of 76% with this specific strategy, so we have a good cushion there. And you might have noticed that we got our first trade entry of the day there. This is a very small scalp, so this trade should play out very quickly compared to our normal strategy. You may also notice that we have kept the strategy enabled in the same mode inside that trade, keeping our automated system online to constantly scan for an edge-worthy entry. And there is that winning fill. We are on six contracts, so we are at $275.52 of profit after commissions. And like I stated earlier, we have the system continuously enabled to look for that next trade. With the system on, it is now looking for a triple stacked balance in either direction to take the opposing side of as we have the system in regression mode. And right there is that second entry of the day quite quickly after that first fill. As you can see, price is moving up and down very choppily. However, we are trying to take advantage of that regressive action with these small hyper scalps. However, even with only a four tick take profit and a six tick stop loss, this trade is taking quite a while to fill. It's important to remember that the speed of the market is an important factor when trading polarity. Here, the market speed has slowed down considerably while in this regressive chop meaning that we actually don't want to be trading inside of this chop. So we're actually going to do the conservative move here in terms of taking the next trade by switching it into trend mode and turning on auto arm, meaning it will automatically capture any potential breakouts as long as there is a stacked imbalance in that direction. With the strategy in auto arm, it is the most automated that the strategy gets. Once you turn on auto arm, you don't have to take any other actions for the next trade to be filled. But it's important to remember that with auto arm, you're going to get less entries than if you were going to be looking for manual trades as auto arm is only designed to take breakout trades. And right here is our second fill of the day. Another winning trade, bringing our total profit up to $526 and four cents after commissions. And here with the market slowing down, it takes quite a while to get filled onto our next trade when price breaks out of the top here. Price is going to ping pong up and down on this green and red line. We actually would have gotten a profitable regression trade there in that hyper scalping mode if we had kept it on, on both in regression mode there. And you'll notice here that price breaks out. And with that happening, price velocity also increases a lot. The market speed picks up, volume picks up, and we finally get into a trade. Although we miss out on that initial breakout on those imbalances there, we do end up getting filled for a pretty solid long entry there. And as I pointed out before, I want you guys to notice that on these trend trades, they, are end up, they do end up filling a lot quicker than regression trades as they are actually directionally biased. So there's that third fail, bringing our total profit up to $801.56, again, after commissions. And notice how after we turn on auto arm, we haven't changed anything with the strategy. We've left it on and it is continuously going to automatically arm and disarm the strategy to make sure that we are getting into trades that are advantageous to us. 
And notice right there was our fourth fill of the day into another long trade after price peaked out and regressed a little bit downward. I want you guys to take a peek at Delta while this trade progresses. It has been ping-ponging in between 230 and 300 throughout the whole trade. And after we get filled, Delta surges all the way up to 450 inside of this bar and then crashes down. After that, price action follows. So here's where we're gonna turn the strategy off out of auto arm mode, flip it into regression mode and put on arm both. Basically, the difference between arm both and auto arm is that arm both skips a layer of detection that auto arm has. Auto arm adds an additional filter and with arm both, we're basically taking that out of the equation and skipping that additional level of filtration that we have with auto arm. I recommend if you're just starting out with the strategy to pretty much rely solely on auto arm while you get a grasp on the fundamentals of order flow. Also, I don't want you gold and oil guys or pretty much any commodity traders to feel left out here. I know order flow isn't really the best on commodities, so we're working on a level two based strategy that can give you that quantitative edge that you're looking for when trading. We've invested a ton into research on those strategies, and we've come up with a pretty substantial list of instruments that this strategy is going to work on. Basically, if you're trading oil, gold, or any kind of agricultural future, this is going to work really well for it. Just make sure it is a high volume, high liquidity instrument if you're going to trade that strategy. But enough of that. That's a little sneak peek for what's going on next year, but I'm pretty excited about it. And I want to let you guys know. So it actually takes us a while to get filled after we turn on arm both. So even without that extra layer of filtration, because of the addition of that adversary detection that we added in the last update, we actually has another layer on top of that triple stacked and balanced detection. So it's not just triple stacked and balanced detection, it's using a proprietary algorithm to determine whether or not a trade is going to be a fake out. Of course, you can't have 100% accuracy when trading regardless of how good your strategy is, but this does add on to that compound win rate that we were talking about earlier, where we're able to have multiple layers of edges that stack on top of each other and enhance our win rate to a much higher level than we did before. Although our total alpha may be less because we're getting less trades due to that filtration, our total win rate is going to be higher and that sharp ratio is the magic number we're looking for. That's going to be higher as well, which is going to lead to a more consistent and reliable strategy when we have that adversary detection. Before this update, if you turned on arm both, you get filled probably within the next minute or so. With this, you might end up waiting 15 to 20 minutes at the highest. Just so the system can make sure that it's not going to be just a fake breakout or a fake regressive trade. And there is another winning regressive trade with $1,350 of total profit today. Also, I want you guys to make sure that if you're trading earn a trade, you have dynamic commission rates selected and you have the Ninja Trader commission template selected to reflect your commissions for that day. With dynamic commissions, you're going to be paying less overall, in my opinion. And overall, it's going to enhance your edge because commissions can definitely decay your edge by a significant amount when trading a kind of hyperscale strategy like in this video. Anyway, after that fill, we had it in regression mode in arm both again, and we got filled into another trade and it's gonna be another long trade. Biggest thing to watch out for when trading a hyperscale strategy are news events. In contrast to the 15 tick strategy one-to-one -one risk reward ratio, this strategy definitely does not excel in an extremely high volatility environment. For example, in a Federal Reserve meeting, you're definitely gonna wanna not be trading the hyperscale strategy. If you insist on trading in the news events like that, I highly suggest sticking to the one-to-one -one risk reward ratio that we've used in most of our videos. But for this, you're going to get a higher amount of total alpha when you're trading throughout a regular trading day. So make sure you're watching the economic calendar and making sure there aren't any big news events like CPI or stuff like non-farm payroll, which can dramatically impact the market. With this, your margin for error is just too small to trade those kinds of volatility. With only six ticks of downside you can get before getting stopped out, it's just not worth it. And then like clockwork, there's that fill again, bringing our total profit on the day up to $1,628. Of course, this is actually a little bit of a slower trading style in terms of our relative contract size. Your position sizing is gonna be have to have to be a little bit higher if you wanna be able to match the gains you're getting with a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio with let's say 15 ticks. 
You're also going to be paying more in commissions because you're using more contracts to get the same amount of alpha. So do keep that in mind when trading this style of strategy. You can definitely get screwed over by slippage in commissions if you don't keep them under control. But if you're willing to take the trade off of a longer trading session, as well as actually having to pay attention to news, you might want to start trading this strategy. You might want to look into it and switch over from your 15 tick, at least in some areas. Also, this strategy does also work quite well on treasury bonds. For example, the ones that have a very high tick size. So relatively speaking, you're going to get a ton of value in comparison to the commission that you're paying on both sides. Even with one tick, that will cover the commission and leave you with a substantial amount of profit. On ES, that isn't really sustainable as the commission all is almost half a tick. You can actually get away with a one tick to four tick stop loss when trading those bonds and you'll actually come out quite ahead when using them. But for these hyperscalp strategies, if you're just trading on the Analytica chart three, I don't suggest using them as your small execution speed differences, such as the time from you visualizing that stacked imbalance, the time of you clicking the trade button is going to be enough to erode the edge that stacked imbalances provide when trading the hyperscalp strategy. Also, you'll see here, I've been marking those support and resistance lines of absorption, as well as I've given you guys visual indicators to show that the market has moved from high entropy to low entropy. You see Delta has become highly correlated again, and we're gonna switch back into trend mode, even though we're still on both. So strategy is still on in automated mode, but we're in trend mode instead. With that being said, we get filled here into another consecutive long trade. It's a lot of long trades today, regardless if we're in trend or regression mode. And quite quickly, less than 15 seconds after that, we get filled for another profitable trade up to $1,900 of profit on the day. And here you're actually gonna notice the price is gonna dip back down into this choppy zone that we saw before, meaning that we're gonna switch back into regression mode. As long as you're putting down visual indicators for what your thought process is, it's actually very simple to choose between regression and trend mode. That being said, we did push out a pretty big guidebook overhaul for both the Polarity ATI and the Analytica Chart 3. That's right, the Analytica Chart 3 actually now comes with education on how to trade it. So anyone who's bought that, make sure you check your inbox to check and see for that Analytica Chart 3 guidebook download. Remember that we actually aren't allowed to email you unless you opt into emails, and that can be done on the homepage of our website. Anyway, we got into another long trade. Remember, we're actually in arm both here, but we keep getting into long trades. Even though those are short stacked and balanced, we're in regression mode, so it's a long trade. Our stop loss is actually exactly where it needs to be, right at that key level that we had marked previously, so we're obviously going to leave it there, even though we haven't changed anything this whole trading day. And there is that trade fill for another consecutive win, bringing our total profit all the way up to $2,179. We are now over 50% of the way there to our profit target to secure that $200,000 trading account that we've been looking for. Also guys, by the time this video is out, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've rolled over to the new ES contract, which is 0323. If you're not trading that, you're gonna see really low volume and you might have a lot of liquidity issues, leading to potential losses that are higher than normal. Also guys, I wanna apologize for the lack of content and communication in between me and my community. It's been a very difficult holiday season with a family member passing away. That being said, with this leave of absence, I'm actually back. I'm gonna be really stomping on the gas once the new year happens, and I'm gonna be releasing as much content as humanly possible with a ton of tutorial videos for you guys. I'm gonna make sure that you guys are getting all of the wrinkles in your trading habits ironed out and giving you guys the best possible shot at being profitable in the long term, as that's what we all want when we're trading. Although we're passionate about the markets, I think that we're all really here for one thing, to make money trading. And that's what I want to help you guys do with this upcoming hands-on tutorial series. I'm going to be giving you guys a fundamental step-by-step -step from if you know nothing about trading all the way up to some pretty expert level stuff. If you guys are interested in this kind of series, I would appreciate a comment just to signal some interest. Also with the new year, a lot of potential ideas on how I can structure these live streams. I don't know if they're going to be weekly or daily. Not totally sure, but I'm definitely going to be looking at some kind of flexibility in terms of that situation. And finally, here we get our first short trade in quite some time. If you guys are curious about why I stayed in regression mode even after that breakout, 
Look at that previous level that it tested and failed to pass, as well as polarity automatically marking that green line, which indicates a resistance level, which is why we're staying in regression mode, even with price breaking out. Knew there was gonna be some questions about that, so I want to give you guys an answer before anyone's confused. And here regression mode's really living up to its name of taking a long time to fill these trades. And finally here we get that trade outcome with another winning trade. We're on an insane winning streak. However, you're gonna get very, very streaky wins in terms of trading the strategy. With a 75% win rate, you're gonna get a ton of wins in a row, which actually is very mentally helpful for a new trader. So on the flip side, although it's more of an advanced strategy, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're doing that. Now notice where price is after that trade fill. It's bouncing in between the polarity-based green level and that initially marked absorption level with that yellow line. So here we're gonna give the market some time to complete price discovery before we turn back on the strategy. This isn't required, however, this is a step that I did take. Well, the outcome here isn't price re-entering the channel completely. Price ended up touching, and since I can't really see the future, we turned it back on once price re-entered the zone because we thought that it was gonna be another channel trade. However, price actually ends up breaking out here. And you'll notice that as price approaches this green level for the third time, we switch, switch it back into trend mode. And you might notice if you take a look at Delta, this is a mistake that I made. You're not gonna wanna do this. Switching into trend was actually the incorrect option here. Keep keeping it in regression mode was correct. I think here, since we had gotten so many in a row while doing that, I think that really threw us off our game. As price dives back down, we should have been in regression mode there and we end up getting filled into a long trade and then stopped out. Weirdly enough, streaky wins and streaky losses can really throw you off your game. You end up changing things that aren't really a part of your strategy criteria just because it feels off. Remember, the market is not a feelings-based machine. It's gonna be completely decisive on your strategy. And then there, we get our first loss of the day. Bringing our total gains for the day down to $1,967. Unfortunately, we would have had a flawless trading day if we hadn't made that mistake. I can only show you guys what my actual actions and thought processes are, as you guys are also human, and you're gonna have very similar thought processes to mine, so you might have done the exact same thing there and armed it in trend mode instead of regression mode, like I did. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you've all had a wonderful holidays with your friends and family. If you guys like this content today, it would mean a ton to me if you liked and subscribed. And if you have any ideas for new content that's coming up, make sure to leave a comment and let me know. I always am open to suggestions and I love it when you guys jog my brain by giving me ideas that I've never even thought of. I've gotten some really great suggestions to add to Polarity recently and I'm very excited for what's coming in the future. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. I'll see you later.